Coming up on Cronkite News on Arizona PBS, Arizona hits a milestone in the wake of the pandemic. And later, how Phoenix Fire is still battling a blaze that drew the largest response in state history. And later on Break It Down, a look at the issue of representation in Latino musicals made into movies. Cronkite News starts now. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. I'm Isabella Fredrickson. And I'm Harrison Klopp. Thank you for joining us. Arizona reached a milestone as six million vaccine doses have been administered across the state. The Arizona Department of Health Services also shows that more than 2.9 million Arizonans have been fully vaccinated against COVID-19. But there are concerns over the effectiveness of the vaccine for a portion of the population. The CDC is studying if the vaccine is effective for immunocompromised people. In those cases, a special booster may be required for better protection. Several studies suggest people who take the immunosuppressants might not have had a strong response to the vaccine and therefore might not be protected against the virus. These drugs are used to treat common conditions such as psoriasis, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, and more. Dr. Anthony Fauci speaks on the matter. We have to address those problems because there are a substantial number of people in the United States and worldwide who do not have an adequate immune response. The National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases will soon start a study to help determine the best approach to help those who are immunocompromised. Phoenix firefighters worked all weekend on a massive fire that swept through several recycling yards and destroyed several businesses. One firefighter was injured. The fire started Saturday at Friedman Waste Control Systems in West Phoenix. At its peak, more than 200 firefighters fought the flames. Chief Todd Keller says this marked the single largest response to an emergency incident in the fire department's history. Firefighters checked in with the Arizona Department of Environmental Quality on the state of air quality in the area. Um, certainly it was a large fire and when we do see large fires like this or fires that could be harmful, we do have our emergency response unit that in this case Phoenix Fire did call and they responded out there and they set up four monitors around the fire to ensure that there weren't the toxic fumes that we could potentially see. It was reported the fire also knocked out power to about 800 homes and businesses. Firefighters are investigating what started the fire. Another fire south of Superior has sparked an evacuation notice of several towns in East Arizona. The Telegraph fire has grown to over 56,000 acres and triggered that response from Gila River County Sheriff. The evacuations have been called for residents of Miami, Arizona and surrounding communities. As of 10 a.m. this morning, the fire was not contained at all, which has allowed it to spread even more. As the fire grows, the Red Cross has moved their evacuation site from Miami to Globe. Officials are saying the fire was human caused. The Mesco fire is also burning in that area and has caused some neighborhoods near Globe to also be evacuated. A top Arizona judge says he wants to set a new task force to look for ways to improve transparency, fairness and consistency of plea bargains. Arizona Supreme Court Chief Justice Robert Brutnell signed an order to create a task force of 19 members on plea bargains, sentencing, and depositions. Brutnell says judges have a role to make sure the agreements are voluntary, complete, and recorded. Though, these deals are negotiated between prosecutor and defense attorneys. 90% of convictions and penalties in Arizona's courts come from plea bargains. The United States Supreme Court has decided not to take up a case on whether the U.S. draft law is sexually discriminatory. They decided not to take up the case due to Congress being in talks of changing the law. The justices declined to hear a constitutional challenge filed by the National Coalition for Men. The group wanted the court to reconsider a 1981 decision upholding the Military Selective Service Act. The law requires all men to register for the draft, but leaves women out. The case argued it was unlawful sex discrimination. The White House urged the justices not to step in. It noted Congress is already considering a commission report from last year that recommends expanding the draft eligibility to everyone 18 years old. Coming up on Cronkite News, Vice President Kamala Harris took her first international trip in her role to Guatemala. 
will give you the details on how she is pushing to create ties between the U.S. and Central America. And still to come, we'll give you the details on what to expect when flying for the summer. Don't go away. Cronkite News provides students at ASU's Walter Cronkite School of Journalism with the opportunity to gain real-world experience in the newsroom. At Cronkite News, our students produce professional content for audiences by taking on all roles, whether they be reporting, anchoring, producing, or studio production. Each department gives students first-hand professional newsroom experience. For more information, visit cronkitenews.azpbs.org. Every day I wake up, my first thought is, how can I serve this community? The biggest hurdle was not taking PTSD personally. So would you welcome, please, the amazing. Everybody that watches me, they say that I am the greatest that they've ever seen. Take a journey with Arizona PBS. Join us every Sunday afternoon for Destination Drama. Watch all your favorite PBS dramas like Grandchester. I'm William Davenport, new vicar of Grandchester. Paul Dark. Nothing in my life has meaning without you. And Victoria. I know that I'm young, but I know my duty. And if you missed a recent primetime drama, we'll help you catch up on those too. Destination Drama, every Sunday afternoon at 1, only on Arizona PBS. Cronkite News is more than your local news station. Through our innovative ideas, we create new ways to connect with our viewers and have their stories be heard. Our cutting edge technology allows us to take a deeper dive into seeking the truth and delivering new perspectives. Stay up to date on top Arizona stories anytime on TikTok, Twitter, and Facebook at Cronkite News. Vice President Kamala Harris took her first international trip as Vice President in Guatemala last night. Today, Harris held a news conference with the Guatemalan President to discuss migration issues with the U.S. Vice President Harris has been tasked by the Biden administration to help strengthen ties with Central America to control migration at the southern U.S. border. Today, Harris announced several initiatives to address economic and security issues, including anti-corruption and anti-human smuggling task forces, funding for affordable housing and investments in small businesses. Anthropologist at Lehman College, Victoria Sanford, says some of the key reasons for people to leave is the wealth gap. For the majority of people in Guatemala is that they don't have access to food, they don't have access to education, they don't have access to health care, they don't have access to transportation. And so then we have to say, okay, well, how do you get those things? Because we know that we want people to have those things so that they can build a good life. Vice President Harris also mentioned helping to increase vaccine distribution. She said the goal of our work is to help Guatemalans find hope at home. Harris emphasized a message to the people who are thinking about making the dangerous trek to the United States-Mexico border. Do not come. As the, as the summer travel season begins to heat up, more passengers are heading to Sky Harbor Airport. Tina Giuliano spoke with TSA about what to expect this summer. Sky Harbor is filling up with passengers again. Last year, only about 21 million people traveled through Sky Harbor, compared to the over 40 million from previous years, according to Sky Harbor officials. During the pandemic, if anyone traveled, they saw no lines. It was a quick process. That's not the case anymore. For many of these passengers, it's their first time flying since the beginning of the pandemic. Mancha says they've seen that many of those passengers have forgotten a few things about flying. As the number of travelers here at Sky Harbor Airport continue to increase, TSA says if there's one thing to remember about traveling, it's to check in and come here early. As the country hits the two million traveler mark, Mancha said people aren't used to their normal airport routine. Often heard excuse that we hear from people when we find a prohibited item is, I didn't know it was in my bag or it's my spouse's bag and I didn't realize that 
this item was in there. She said they've found a record number of prohibited items in carry-ons. Before you start packing, empty out your carry-on bags. Make sure that you know exactly what's in them before you start packing. To continue through the airport, visitors will have to give up the item and in some cases pay a fine. Uh, the key to remember is anything that can be weaponized is, would be considered a prohibited item. Even children's toys that resemble weapons are also considered to be a prohibited item. In Phoenix, Tina Giuliano, Cronkite News. A trust has bought farmland near Tucson and is planning to make it a wildlife preserve. Nonprofit Arizona Land and Water Trust bought over 370 acres of the Sapori Creek and farm in Amato. Arizona Land and Water plans for the preserve to be used in many ways to help farmers improve their sustainable growing techniques and riparian wildlife. The area was said to be used by a Spanish explorer as farmland back in the 1700s. It has continuously been used since then and is said to be one of the oldest continuously used farmlands in the United States. The land was once bought to be developed as a home community, but that was defeated in 2008. According to the organization's website, the habitat could become home for more than 30 different species. I'm Emily Carmen, and coming up after the break, I'll have your Cronkite Sports Report. The Phoenix Suns get set to take on the Denver Nuggets tonight in Game 1 of the Western Conference Semifinals. We'll have more for you on that matchup right after this. Ready to watch the best of PBS anytime, anywhere, on nearly any device? It's easy with the free PBS Video app. Simply download the PBS Video app on your mobile or streaming device. Now you can watch the latest PBS episodes or catch up on the shows you missed. And when you support your local station, you can get PBS Passport, giving you access to more episodes, more specials, more of what you love. Here we go, lights up, whoa. As artists, we conduct our educations in public. You can never know whether it's going to be a success. One just has to risk it. It's you and the work and the place. It's a very particular relationship. Here's our lens. Tell us what you think. Friday night at nine on Arizona PBS. Every day I wake up, my first thought is, how can I serve this community? The biggest hurdle was not taking PTSD personally. Would you welcome, please, the amazing. Everybody that watches me, they say that I am the greatest that they've ever seen. Cronkite News provides students at ASU's Walter Cronkite School of Journalism with the opportunity to gain real-world experience in the newsroom. At Cronkite News, our students produce professional content for audiences by taking on all roles, whether they be reporting, anchoring, producing, or studio production. Each department gives students first-hand professional newsroom experience. For more information, visit cronkitenews.azpbs.org. Welcome back to Cronkite News. I'm Emily Carmen, and this is your Cronkite Sports Report. The Phoenix Suns are back at it tonight. Round two of the Western Conference playoffs tips off in Phoenix. After eliminating the Lakers in six games, the Suns now face the Denver Nuggets. Cronkite News reporter Katie Cheshire is at the Phoenix Suns Arena with more on facing the NBA's leading MVP candidate. The Suns eliminated LeBron James and the Lakers. Now, they'll try to take on one of the best big men in the league, Denver's Nikola Jokic. Jokic is a contender for the league's most valuable player award. The Suns tip off versus the Nuggets at 7 p.m. tonight, right here at Phoenix Suns Arena. Though Chris Paul said Jokic is a great player, he added that they have their own good big in DeAndre Ayton. We know how good uh, Jokic is and how well he plays, but 
DA is just as important as Oxford. What I think a lot of people don't realize about him is how competitive he is. You know, he, he goes into every game, every matchup or whatnot, you know, ready to accept the challenge. And I think that's big for us, big for our team. Suns fans have been enjoying this playoff run and the great play from Devin Booker, who scored a playoff high 47 points versus the Lakers in game six. Booker has been a star on the court and in the community. The NBA just awarded the All-Star Guard the CARES Community Assist Award for the month of May for his work with local charities. Now, the Suns will need as much help from Booker as they can get to win this game one. In Phoenix, Katie Cheshire, Cronkite Sports. That matchup between Nikola Jokic and DeAndre Ayton will be one... Will be... will be one to watch throughout this series. Best of seven series between the Suns and Nuggets will start at Phoenix Suns Arena for games one and two. Then the teams will be on the road to the Mile High City of Denver for games three and four. Again, tip-off is tonight at seven. In case you missed some of the sports stories from the weekend, don't worry, we've got you covered. Here are three stories we're tracking right now. Starting us off at number one, professional golfer and former Sun Devil John Rahm was disqualified from the Memorial Tournament over the weekend after he tested positive for COVID-19. The PGA notified Rahm after he walked off 18 following his third round. Rahm was leading the tournament by six strokes when he received the news. Number two, it was announced by Vice President of Athletics Ray Anderson that ASU has parted ways with head baseball coach Tracy Smith. This is after the Sun Devils were eliminated from their regional in Austin yesterday. The program has made four regional appearances in the past seven years under Smith, but failed to advance to a super regional in his tenure as, as head coach. Finally, at number three, the U Arizona baseball team swept at the Tucson region, Regional, securing their win last night with a 5-2 victory over UC Santa Barbara. This is the first regional championship win for Arizona since 2016. The Wildcats will now host the Super Regionals starting next weekend. And that's it for the Cronkite Sports Report. Back to you, Isabella and Harrison. That's it for Cronkite News tonight. Thanks for joining us. Stick around for Break It Down next.